these the largest glass pivot doors you've ever seen in the world, Gary? I think they are, Jim. This is in a residence in Antwerp. For doors this large, you need to keep in mind that custom designs require caution. Beware, as a professional, you have an obligation to make sure that public safety is paramount. This particular slide is a news article of uh, one of your bits of glass breaking and falling down. <laughs> um, how do we minimise the risk of people in the public getting injured from facades, Gary? We do it through performance testing. True. Engineers' favourite pastime, building things and then destroying them. <laughs> we gain a lot of knowledge about how things fail. From that, we can work out what is the safest means, safest means of making the facade. Some people accidentally test the whole building's destruction. Can you believe that, Gary? <laughs> Here at G Dames, we don't test whole buildings, but we do test full-scale facades. In our test rig, we test full-scale facades for water penetration performance, air infiltration performance. We check how much it deflects, typically under a wind event that would happen once in every 25 years. We check for maintenance worker loads acting on the building, such as abseilers walking on top of sunshades. And my favourite, the proof test. We test the facade for waters the ultimate wind load that could ever foreseeable be uh, applied to the building in its life, typically for a large high-rise building. That's a wind load that's only going to occur once in a thousand year return period. Wind load in our part of the world is by far the largest loading criteria applied to a facade of the building. This slide shows you a page from the Australian Wind Code. You notice all that heavy shading across yes. the northern coastline of Australia? That area is where cyclones frequent the coastline. And the wind loads up there on the coastline, the northern coastline of Australia can get quite impressive. For example, here in building uh, in Brisbane, most buildings, average size buildings, would have a wind pressure applied to it at around three kilopascals. Up in those cyclonic regions, it could get as much as 14 kilopascals, about five times the wind loads that we experience here in Brisbane. We'll have a look at that a bit further in the lecture. We'll move now on to weatherproofing principles of facades. What do you need to get a leak in a facade, Gary? Water and a hole. And you also need a driving force to push the water through that hole. So there's three basic things that you need for water leaks. That driving force can be in the form of wind pressure, pushing the water through the hole, gravity, drawing the water down through a hole, kinetic energy, like rain, forcing the water through the hole or surface tension, capillary action, which can actually draw water up and all through a hole. There's basically three types of waterproofing methods that are employed to facades and buildings. A face sealed system, which is the most basic form. Is that like a fish tank approach? Absolutely. But very similar to what they do on Apple stores, because there's no other way to achieve a seal other than to just glue the glazing elements together with a wet sealant. A waterhead um, weatherproofing principle is another rudimentary principle. It's applied typically to residential windows and doors. It's a cheaper form of system that allows for cost-effective designs for generally the people in the public who can't afford more expensive weathering systems. Is it why you see where you see the water sitting in the trough inside the window? Absolutely. Yep. If your students have a look at uh, your windows in a storm, which you probably don't, have a look next time and see if you can see water building up in the, the trough inside the window frame. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Pressure equalised systems are by far the most superior weather resistance method that can be applied to facades or buildings. Let's have a look now at each of those three different types and how they perform. So as we mentioned, the face seal system relies solely on the external wet seal between the glazing elements to create a single line of defence. If we go by our weatherproofing principles, you can have water, you can have wind blowing on the building, which is the force, but without a hole, you obviously won't get water into the building. However, 
Face sealed systems are typically wet sealed on site, where there's a lot of contaminants, dust, dirt. The workers on site might come into work hungover from their day before. Workmanship can be a problem with face sealed systems, and there's inevitably leaks and pinholes in that sealant. Every one of those holes acts like a straw. If there's high pressure on the outside of the building from the wind, and we are in a controlled low pressure environment inside the building, that pressure difference acts like a straw of air sucking through that hole, and it can draw water in through that hole that's flowing down the outside of the facade. It's amazing how much water will spit inside. We've witnessed it in a lot of testing. Just a tiny little pinhole in that seal can cause a huge water leak in the building. As mentioned previously, the waterhead product is typically employed on cost-effective residential or domestic style products. The whole philosophy of the waterhead system is that a trough of water can build up inside the window and the pressure of that water head equals the air pressure applied to the outside of the window. So you get an equilibrium. This volume of water being uh, in the equilibrium against the external wind pressure, so no more water can pass through. through the window. This is an ideal situation though. What happens in reality, Jim? In reality, wind doesn't just blow at a constant pace. Wind comes in gusts and it sucks away from the building. So this trough of water that resides in the window when it rains, it can splash over the inside of the, the reservoir and wet inside the building. So it is a cheap and relatively low performing style of rain screen or waterproofing method. The pressure equalised system is by far the superior weather resistant system for facades. There's basically three things that you need to create a pressure equalised system, Gary. You need a rain screen on the outside of the building to try to minimise the amount of water that passes. You need drain holes and ventilation from that rain screen into an internal cavity. And that internal cavity gets pressure equalised to the outside air. The third element of the pressure equalised system is an internal air seal to create that pressure equalised cavity between the outside air and the middle of the facade system. So when the wind gusts on the outside, that cavity inside the facade maintains the same pressure as the outside. If there's no difference in pressure, there's no force acting on any water that, act, that passes through that rain screen other than gravity. So water just drops straight, straight down to a seal gutter system and drains outside the building through the drain holes. So effectively you're letting the water come in and let it go out. Correct. We're trying to minimise the amount of water that gets in. What we're encouraging is the air coming in, so we get that pressure equalised cavity. There's another little quiz for you, Gary. <laughs> Test out your knowledge. Residential or housing style construction. There's a slide there showing three typical systems of an external timber veneer, an external brick veneer, and a double brick or block cavity system. Each of those three systems has an external screen, has a cavity between the external screen, and has a building paper or sarking acting as an air seal on the inside. So which type of system is used and employed on your domestic house construction? I believe it is a pressure equalised system. Correct. I need to lead you dumb glass people through everything. <laughs> we can see that this is one of the most basic forms of pressure equalised system that's been around and employed for decades, even in the most cheap housing construction styles, pressure equalised systems are employed. Again, pressure equalised systems can be employed in some of the most basic facade systems, like a precast concrete panel system. Rather than just sealing up the external face of the precast panels and relying on uh, questionable sealant work. A pressure equalised system can quite easily be employed. The internal seal, the external rain screen of the facade, 
and drainage out each floor to allow the water to drain and air to go up the cavities to pressure equalise the system. So pressure equalised systems can, and in my opinion, should be employed everywhere possible in the facades of a building to maintain weather resistance. Because the last thing that you want is the owner of the building ringing you up, telling you that this building is leaking. Correct. This concludes this video on performance, properties and design of facades. The next one we'll be looking at is having a look at the thermal performance of facade systems.